like that. Boom, 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 just like that. Eight, 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 productions, just like that. Like, comment, subscribe, just like that. Boom, wait a minute, just like that. Hey, Dub, you ready? Wait a minute. How you doing, guys? My name is Alan Wade. Thank you so much for joining me. And today I'm going to make a video showing you exactly how I pre-treat my shirts. I have two heat presses behind me, as you guys can see. One is the 16 by 20 Rakoma press and the other one is the Heat Press Nation 16 by 20 Signature Series press, both of which I have affiliate links down in the description below. If you'd like to purchase any of these, if you find them, they would that they would be helpful in your business. Guys, so normally you see me as well as other people doing videos on DTG printing and we don't show you the ugly side of it. And um, it's not that it's difficult, it's not that it's super, super time consuming as long as you have the right equipment, it's just that it's something that is necessary that I think would be a disservice to you if I didn't show you exactly the processes in which you need to take in order to have a successful, a successful DTG business and in order to optimize your pre-treatment process in a way that can help maximize your time as well as your profitability. So, in my opinion, guys, if you are doing DTG and you are doing orders, like if you get orders for like 10 and 20 shirts, to maximize your time, you need more than one heat press in order to do pre-treating. I have 10 shirts right here that I'm going to pre-treat right in front of you guys live so you guys can get an idea of exactly how long it takes. I'm not gonna speed up the video. I'm not gonna cut anything. I'm gonna go straight through so you guys can see in real time how long it takes me to pre-treat 10 shirts. And this is absolutely something that you guys need to be charging for in your business that a lot of people probably leave out. And if you're interested in DTG, then you need to watch this video to see what it is that you're getting into because before you print, all shirts must be pre-treated unless you buy pre-pre-treated shirts that are more expensive than the regular shirts. All right. So let's start this. Um, I have my pre-treat machine, my Wagner spray gun already. I have both heat presses heated up, 300 degrees, 40 seconds on each. And let me show you how I get started. All right, start time now. All right, the first thing I do is I like to press three shirts, do a pre-press on three shirts, just to get a flat surface, lay down all those fibers, and I find that it speeds up the starting process of, um, of the pre-treat, all right? So it gives me something good to start off with, all right? So the first one, I lay down on the shirt, lay down on the table right here, ready to be pre-treated. Second one, heat up to get all the wrinkles out. Nice flat surface to pre-treat on. Press that for a few seconds. And this is the pace in which you want to be working. You don't want to be going all super, super fast, breaking your neck, breaking a sweat. It's really not necessary, especially if you have the right equipment, which is two heat presses, like I highly recommend. Got that laid down flat. Gonna get my next shirt, lay it down flat over here because I have two heat presses. Lay it down flat, get a nice flat surface. And like I said, you see that I'm not killing myself. I'm not going all fast, not going all crazy because when you go super, super fast, it's not realistic. It's not sustainable in my opinion. It's not something that you want to demand um, that another person do if, if you hire somebody else. All right, so boom, we got that out of there. Now we can start pre-treating these shirts. All right, nice flat guard surface. All right, what you can do if you'd like which I didn't do because I see a few on here is you can lint roll your shirt to get all those loose little fibers out of there. And now I'm going to start to pre-treat. And like I said, see I'm taking my time doing this. No need to rush, get a little method going on. Take my foam roller and Roll it lightly, and that's how I do my shirts. All right, now what I do is I grab one right here, picking up the other one, laying this down. 
when I do it like this, guys, you're always doing something and you're gonna see exactly what I'm saying in a minute. Something is always getting pressed, something is always getting pre-treated, and that's how you're able to maximize your time, maximize your profitability when you do it like this, all right? You're not gonna see me stop for anything once. No stopping to wait on a machine to be done. Everything is always, something is always being done. That's the way you maximize your time. All right. See a little lint right here. And whenever you see something, get it off your shirt, whether it be a piece of lint, whether it be a string, because that is gonna come off in your DTG and you don't want that. All right, so take the time off, take those little things off and you're good to go. Take This one is ready to be pre-treated. Take it up, lay it down, pick this up, put this down right here. Boom, just like that. So who is DTG for? DTG is for those people that have shops already, right? You have shops already, you have a shop already. You um, are doing t-shirts and occasionally you get somebody who wants one or two or maybe 10 shirts done, all right? I go as far as 20 and 30, to be honest with you. And um, it's just not worth setting up a bunch of screens if you're a screen printer, because these DTG designs, I'm gonna lay the completed one down here, take another one, pre-press it. Something is always getting done. Pre-press on a pre-press. So it's for the people that wanna be able to print up a one-off really, really fast. You don't wanna spend money on transfers. You know, you don't wanna, you know, make transfers yourself with your DTF printer. That's who DTG is for. The only way, the only way you are going to scale a DTG business is if you get more than one DTG printer. See how I'm going right now? And something is always getting done. I went live the other day and I printed up a bunch of shirts on my DTG printer and got a phone call. What you guys will notice is even though something was getting done, sometimes I still had to wait for my DTG printer to finish printing up a design because the DTG printers are not like super fast, right? So in order to keep it going, you're gonna need to purchase more than one DTG printer. And that could be very, very expensive, as you guys know. See that? Something's always getting done, always moving, keep it moving. And that's the key. If you, if you keep on moving, then you can maximize your profitability. And if you have the right equipment, you can keep on moving. If you don't have the right equipment, you're gonna be stopping, waiting for a heat press to get finished, stopping, waiting for a DTG uh, printer to stop, to, to stop printing so you can dry it or you can cure it, so you can hover, whatever you wanna do, All right? You're gonna be waiting on something. So this way, like I said, something's always getting done. Boom, look at that. Shirt after shirt after shirt. And you can pretty much play around with this method and do it any way you like. I just do it the way it works for me. All right, and this is how I preach it on my shirts and get large orders done. Well, not large orders because if it's something like you know, 50 shirts, I can do it, but the part that's gonna give me problems is the actual applying of the graphics because I only have one DTG printer. Now, if I had two DTG printers, then I can scale up and I can get those orders done faster. But being as I only have one, 
not possible. Possible, possible for me to do it, but it's gonna take a lot more time. And time is money. And we gotta charge for our time. We gotta not forget to charge for our time. That's why it's important that I show you guys this process. I can't show you guys, you know, me printing up all these shirts without showing you guys how I pre-treat all these shirts because that's important. Pre-treating is very, very important. You gotta watch what you're doing. All right, this is done being pressed. Pick it up, pick it off. Now, press the pre-treat. So you gotta, this takes a little bit of coordination, a little bit of knowing where stuff is and stuff like that. Cause you can't just go and, you know, pre-treat a shirt twice, which is possible because it can be a little bit confusing. So seeing what you guys are seeing now, you know, uh, pre-treated sides facing each other, seeing what you're seeing, what you're seeing now, you know that when it comes to pre-treating shirts, you're as limited, um, your speed depends on how many uh, heat presses you have, you know? But I would say one person can only, really only operate two heat presses. Anything more than that would be too much, in my opinion. Actually, I think it's a fact, to be honest with you, because it's just too much. I'm already halfway through. But the key is for you guys to see my workflow and to see how I'm able to knock this stuff out. All right. See how I'm able to knock this stuff out. So I'll take this one, which I just pressed, lay it down, boom, trade with this one. And like I said, I'm not in a rush or anything. I'm just getting it done in a timely manner, real effective manner. Some people um, in a lot of the groups have problems with their DTG printer. And I think I know why. They say that DTG, you wanna have your humidity up in the room that you're keeping your DTG printer. And that's true. But um, I like to try to like simplify things so you guys, potential buyers can understand. And the best way I can simplify that is understanding that um, I'll give you a, a, a real life scenario. All right. People have problems with these DTG printers clogging right and the print head getting clogged up and stuff like that and that's 100 percent because of what the ink does it's mainly the white ink right the white ink needs to constantly circulate and in order to keep that white ink constantly circulating you have to have the proper humidity so i'm going to say this if you want to maintain the proper humidity in your room and have 100% less problems with your DTG printer, 100% be able to print shirts back to back to back to back to back to back. Keep your DTG printer in a room that is warm. You hear what I'm saying? You hear what I just said to you? Keep your DTG printer in a room that is warm. Real life story, I'm gonna tell you what happened to me. All this winter long, I was printing on my DTG printer, but I found that like every couple prints, it would kind of like, the, the image would kind of get messed up because the inks were doing something weird. I think, I think the room was too cold. I have my humidifier and everything, and I had a proper settings, you know, we keep trying to keep the humidity up in the room. But the fact still remains that the DTG printer performs best in warm environments. When the, when the printer needs to be warm, all right? The printer's like, a per, it needs to be warm. I didn't, I didn't spray this yet. So if you keep your printer 
in a room that's warm, I can't guarantee it, but I'm telling you that you will have a, uh, uh, you will have a better, you know, providing that everything is right with your DG Brenner, you will have a success like I'm having. Because you guys saw me, I went live the other day and I'm printing designs back to back to back to back to back. And I kept on going after I got off the live with you guys. So if you want to have success like that, I can only teach you guys things that happen to me off of my experiences. And the variable in my situation was it got warmer outside. It went from winter to summer and it's a lot hotter in that room where I keep my DTG printer. So I know from that, that means that from now on, I need to, I need to like put a little small heater in the room where I keep my DTG and then I'll be good to go. Look, I'm on my last shirt right now. You guys can see how long the video was and that's how long it pretty much takes to pre-treat 10 shirts, which like I said, you need, to be, you need to be charging for it. You need to be charging for the time that it took you to pre-treat these shirts. So calculate that cost into your price, right? Because with DTG, you get quality prints. You get quality prints, and the prints last very long. Like, I've, I've watched shirts. I've washed shirts pretty long. Um, I've washed shirts uh, pretty often, and the design has not c come out. So I'm telling you guys, um, you get good results. You get good prints, especially if you got some detail, right? And, but you just need to... You just need to uh, pre-treat correctly and your machine needs to be functioning right. You got to baby these machines a little bit, but it's worth it and you can make a lot of money doing it. I'm telling you right now, you can make a lot of money doing it as long as you do it correctly. Keep on watching me. I'm telling you guys exactly how I'm having success doing it. The DTG likes to be in a warm area. I don't know why the manufacturers aren't saying that specifically, but I'm letting you know now, your DTG needs to be in a room that is warm. That's the only, that's the only thing. It wants to be in a warm room. And that's it. Did I do this already? All right? And just like that, this is my last shirt right here. Then I'm gonna press. And all throughout this video, what have, been, what have you been seeing me do? You've been seeing me move around, doing this shirt, doing that shirt. Never, never kept still, always moving. And that's the benefits of having two heat presses versus having one. I got two heat presses here where I pre-treat my shirts. And I got two heat presses in the house where my, heat, where my uh, DTG printer is so that I can hover using one like you guys saw me and I can press the design down after it's dried from hovering using the second heat press. Now, I would be able to do even more shirts like I'm able to pre-treat shirts faster down here in a continuous motion. I'll be able to print more shirts if I had a second DTG printer. And that is how you scale your DTG business by having more than one DTG. How to scale your pre-treating business. Having more than one heat press, not more than one pre-treater, but you can have a dedicated person for just spraying shirts and uh, you know just pressing it for five seconds and spraying the shirt. That's scalable. Boom, look at that. Both heat presses off and all 10 shirts pre-treated let me know if you guys think this video was helpful. I thought it would be helpful. I didn't, you know, move around too fast. I didn't like try to break a sweat or anything, but it's legit just like 80 something degrees outside. Just wanted to give you guys a real life example of what you're getting yourselves into if you want to consider getting a DTG machine. Because like I said, you see a lot of people pressing shirts. You see how nice the shirts look but you don't see the preparation that goes in before you get to press the shirts. 
Because before you get to press the shirts, the shirts need to be pre-treated. Who's doing the pre-treating? You are. Unless you buy pre-pre-treated shirts from a service like RTP, but then you gotta pay more money from the shirts which is taken out of your pocket or you need to pass that on to your clients. If you're able to uh, pre-treat your shirts faster, you can keep those savings in your pocket, you know, because your time, you're spending less time doing it, or you can pass those savings on to your client, which means you can charge them lower for your shirts, which means you probably get more work. All right, so I hope this video was helpful. Let me know how you feel about it in the comments down below. Thank you so much for watching. It's your boy, Alan Wade. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to the channel if you're not subscribed already, and I'll see you on the next video. Peace. Turn up that, crank it up. Why listen to the rest when you're rocking with the best, baby? Oh,